Good afternoon. My name is Colonel Retired Martha Monroe and I, along with the Veterans Grave Committee members, Captain Retired Patty Bolton and Vietnam Veteran Sergeant Tom Zavorsky and the other local veterans with me here today, especially thank you for helping us honor our brothers and sisters in arms who sacrificed their lives through duty to this great country. Thank you to State Representative Hogan, Senator Eldridge, Town of Stowe Select Board members, Courtney Fresh Fresca, H Hector Constantinos, Megan Birch, Michael, and JT Toole, and the citizens of Stowe and surrounding towns for participating in this Memorial Day ceremony, honoring those military heroes who pay the ultimate price in order to protect our freedom. My thanks to all the scouting troops and volunteers that came out this weekend to place flags on the graves of those heroes. Please give all our volunteers a round of applause. Let us now bow our heads for an invocation. Lord, thank you for providing us the opportunity today to honor those who are in your loving arms by giving their lives for our freedom. We ask that you continue to protect us and our families, and we trust that you will see us through the continued trials of our great nation. Please protect and provide comfort and love to the service members at home and overseas that continue to protect our country and its people. We ask all of this in your name, amen. I'd like to now introduce State Representative Hogan. Kate is a resident of Stowe and a key advocate for legislation that supports veterans and their families. We strive to strengthen and improve services to our injured and ill veterans. Veterans rely on these services and it is important to ensure that they are taken care of. With the support of people like Kate, those services are secured for our veterans. Kate, welcome. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you so much, Commander uh, Martha Monroe, members of the Stowe Cemetery Committee, uh, the Stowe Fire, I know there's a color guard, uh, the Stowe Boys and Girl Scouts, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, <laughs> Neshoba Regional High School Marching <laughs> Band, which is really fantastic hearing you come up the hill, and uh, everyone else that is here, elected officials uh, and honored guests. Uh, welcome, of course to all our veterans here today. A grateful nation thanks you for your service. Maybe a round of applause for those veterans that are here today. Thank you so much. You know, today uh, we gather as a community to remember the men and women of our armed forces who have given their last full measure of devotion because Memorial Day keeps faith with the past and the future. 38,000 Massachusetts service members have laid down their lives for their country since the Revolutionary War. We cannot separate the story of American freedom from the story of American sacrifice. Our Republic has always been willing to fight for freedoms, our own and the freedoms of people around the world. Their call to duty is unique in what they teach us about honor, integrity, courage, and selfless service. Lexington and Concord, Gettysburg, Flanders Field, the beaches of Normandy, the 38 parallel offensives, the Battle of Quezon, the Battle of Kabul, Kandahar, Tora Bora, and Baghdad. These battles are always met by young Americans with their whole lives ahead of them. And they and their loved ones are ever our responsibility as an American family. If we love our country, 
we must love and honor our heroes and care for their families. And may these battlefields and those whose blood and honor have made them sacred serve as solemn inspiration to create a more perfect union. They died to save our union, keep our world free from despots, respond to attacks on American soil, both foreign and domestic, and ever protect this great experiment in democracy, the United States of America. Let our battlegrounds, our hallowed grounds, guide us on a path to greater understanding as a nation, as Americans who respect each other and willingly work across differences and across aisles. And as an American family who believes we can meet 21st century challenges and lead by example as well as by strength. The sacrifice of those lost to war is a sacred trust and a responsibility for each of us to commit to a town, a commonwealth, and a country worthy of our heroes. God bless Stowe. God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. God bless America. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Kate. Those are very inspirational words. I will now place the wreath The names of the Stowe residents killed in action while serving their country will now be read by Sophia Schneider and Harper Jackson. French and Indian War, 1755 to 1763. Ephraim Brown, Ebenezer Gates, Abel Ray, Isaac Taylor, Stephen Houghton, Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783, John Gordon, Benjamin Gates, Daniel Gates, Ephraim Gates, Stephen Hale, Civil War, 1861 to 1865, Amasa Arnold, Winfield H. Benham, John Brown, John Alpheus Brown, Frank Burns, Thomas Cunningham, Edward Andrew Davidson, William Henry Dunlap, Amos S. Eastman, Samuel Hampton, James Keene, Albert Mordo Kingsbury, Dr. Paul Ketridge, Cornelius Long, Daniel Artemis Slovering, Matthew McCauley, Francis William Moore, Albion Nutting, George Whitmarsh Parks, Charles F. Perry, Luther Felton Reed, James Rye, Abraham Foster Rogers, George E. Simpson, Matthew Smith, 
Joseph Albert Swift, Owen Taylor, Albert Walcott, George Franklin Whitcomb, James Henry Whitcomb, Thomas Whitman, Henry Windsor Wilder, George Willis. World War I, 1917 to 1918. Frank Edward Doyle, Perry Walcott Halleck, Charles Walter Penny, Richard Ernest Trumpelt, Warren Wheeler Weatherby. World War II, 1941 to 1945. Jerome Donovan, Wilho Allen Pecola. Vietnam, 1964 to 1975. Whitney T. Ferguson III. Richard Wagner Frank II. Flight 10, huh. present humps. Order, Hans, Aris. Good afternoon, and thank you all for joining us out here today. I'm humbled to be yet again able to pay tribute to our fallen heroes and grateful that we are finally getting back to the old normal where so many of you people have been able to come out and participate with us and pay tribute. Today, I'd like to share with you the three most important beliefs that I and many veterans I know mold our life around, and that is God, family, and country. Over the years, I've tried to create a close, intimate relationship with each of these, and quite honestly, sometimes it's been difficult. Other times, it's easy. I attribute this ed, ebb and flow mainly to my perspective. How am I seeing any given situation? How is that situation affecting me, and how does it make me feel? Do I have any control over the situation, or am I powerless to what is happening or the outcome? And how does the answer to those questions strengthen or shake my belief in God, family, and country. Now, some of you may be able to fully relate to me saying that I have a close, intimate relationship with God or with my family. I'm sure many of you feel the same strong feelings about God in your own family. But what about our country? What about the United States of America? How can you have a strong, intimate relationship with your country? I think we can do that by applying the same positive feelings that we apply to the other two. For example, I'm very thankful for all the blessings that I have in my life that God has given me. 
I'm thankful for the support and strength of my family and what they provide me. And I'm very thankful for all the opportunities that this country has to offer me. I'm grateful to God for each day and all the experiences it has to offer. I'm grateful for my family and the time they share with me to strengthen our bonds. And I'm grateful to this country for the security it provides me and its citizens. I love God for all that he's created in heaven and on earth. I love my family for being who they are, kind, caring, thoughtful people. And I love the United States for the ideals and values it upholds. But across all three, God, family, and country, you have to work to build, maintain, and grow those relationships. One of the ways you can grow your relationship with our country is to take action and make positive changes. Work hard to make change happen for a cause that you care about and foster a strong, intimate relationship with America. Memorial Day is about remembering and honoring those people who lost their lives throughout the various wars and conflicts and other accidents while serving in our country's armed forces. While the battle they fought may have been to take over a piece of land, often for strategic advantage, the bigger strategic reason most likely was for a cause or change. Something intangible like liberty, freedom, justice, and equality. They were everyday people that lost their lives for something, some idea, some cause that was greater than themselves. They are the fallen. Perhaps they were trying to save a fellow soldier, hold a position, or simply sleeping in a foxhole. We don't know exactly how each of the names that we read here today perished, but we do know that without people like them, we would not be standing here enjoying our freedoms and the ability to practice our beliefs and support our causes. I ask you to not let these people's names be forgotten, their sacrifice be forgotten, or their stories be forgotten. I challenge you to take the time to pick a name from one of the war memorials, do some research, and find out more about that person behind the name. That person that had such an intimate relationship with America. They lost their lives in service to our country. Throughout the years, more than one million people have lost their lives for the United States. When we hear this number, we think of a massive war like Civil War and World War II. And it's true, these are the wars where the majority of lives were lost. However, we still have the quiet conflicts, the ones you don't hear so much about today. But where our citizens, the ones that raised the right hand and swore an oath to protect the United States of America against all enemies are still losing their lives. In the last decade, the number of deaths have been less than 100 lives per year, but every single one matters. They cared for their country and so should we. We should nourish it, be proud of it, willing to fight for it, and ensure that all that sacrifice, all those lives lost, were not in vain. I urge you to figure out how you can create an intimate relationship with this country, to speak positive, to do something positive, work together, accept differences. At the end of the day, we can all be a hero of sorts for our country. It won't be in the same fashion as the heroes we honor here today, but you can still give something back in a way of saying thank you to those people
that made the ultimate sacrifice. To the ones that didn't make it back home, but will never or should never be forgotten. I wish you all a wonderful Memorial Day and the start to a great summer, making memories with your family, friends, growing your ties and relationship with God, family, and country. God bless America. The Lincoln's Gettysburg Address will now be read by Miss Lucy Rain, an eighth grade student at the Hale Middle School. You have it? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little know nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. Thank you. Great job. I believe we now have some uh, center school first graders who have grown some flowers or hold flags to please place their flowers on one of the graves marked with a flag with the assistance of your parent or a veteran. If you have a flag that you're holding, if the veterans that are in the crowd could please raise their hand so that the first graders and other center school children can give you a flag. Once they're done, we will then uh, play the national anthem.
order humps. At ease. Hill Middle School student Tanner Metbeer, TV Earth, will now read a poem called Somewhere Out There by Dr. Bill McDonald. Somewhere out there today, in a land far, far away, a soldier rides patrol, knowing not what may unfold. He keeps watch as he rides over a dangerous countryside. Roadside bomb could be hit, scary, but the soldier doesn't quit. Think about mom and dad, about the good times had. Stateside, how long here? Back to watching, a little fear. This is a good day to think and to pray. Strange that prayer is so right, when there could be a fire fight. We'll back into base tomorrow, another ride to face. Convoy's done for the day, looks like rain's on its way. Nerve-wracking job, but boring too, but that's what soldiers do. So many over here, none alike, who have gladly joined this fight. Freedom has a high cost, lives given, the ultimate lost. That cost they willingly give, so freedom can continue to live. So remember today, all those who went away and gave their lives, that we might live here and stay free. God bless America. I'm having my own battle up here with the stand today. Let us now bow our heads in prayer. God of love, as we honor those who have died in service to our nation, we pray for peace for all the nations and for all people. We thank you for being with those brave souls in their last hours and helping them to be courageous on the battlefield in order to protect our freedom. We thank you for taking them into your arms and providing them with the peace and the love that they deserve. We ask that their sacrifice is not in vain and that liberty, justice, freedom, and peace will prevail for all mankind. Amen. Will all the participants please now reform to march safely to the Stowe Library for the second part of our ceremony, where we will place a wreath for the Revolutionary and the World War II veterans and say closing march. It's my pleasure to now introduce Senator Eldridge for a few words. Thank you so much, Colonel Monroe. And it's an honor to be here with the people of Stowe here on Memorial Day uh, to commemorate the lives of the brave American men and women who gave their lives to protect the freedoms that we all hold dear and we're able to celebrate and enjoy a beautiful day like this. One of the things I often reflect upon as someone who does not serve in the military 
is what are those freedoms and how do we make sure to strengthen those rights? And I think back to the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights, uh, many of those rights found, including the freedom of speech, the right to say whatever we wish, the freedom of assembly to gather like we are today, the freedom of religion to celebrate any religion we wish, and uh, the right to petition your government. We need to make sure that these rights and freedoms are strong as possible as, in my opinion, the strongest tribute to the brave men and women who gave their lives to protect those very freedoms. It's an honor to be here with you today. Just had a solemn ceremony in the cemetery. Uh, and Carl, Colonel Monroe, thank you so much for all you've done to plan this. Uh, it's wonderful and an honor to stand next to Brave Stowe vet veterans. And uh, thank you again for having me. Thank you, Senator Eldridge. Tom Zaborski will now place the wreath for the Revolutionary War and World War II veterans. Flight 10 hook, present harms. Porter Hums. I would like everybody to please bow their head for a moment for our national moment of silence.
Thank you. I'd like to recognize the many people and groups that have made today possible and this ceremony possible. Please hold your applause till the end. Thank you to Senator Eldridge for coming out today and supporting us. State Representative Hogan for your support for our town, school, and district veterans. The select board for the time that you give and the support to the town and your attendance here today. Mr. Tom Zaborski and Patty Bolton for your help with preparing for the ceremony and the other veterans that are here today for your participation in the parade and the ceremony. Chief, Police Chief John Paul Benoit, Color Guard Lead Captain Evers, and the Fire Department for the Color Guard. Police Chief Michael Salze and the Stowe Police for controlling traffic. The Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, children and parents that help with the flag refresh and veteran marker cleanup at Brookside Cemetery early Saturday morning. The Stowe Minuteman Company for the veteran flag refresh at the Hillside and Lower Village Cemeteries, their gun salute and patriotic music. The Neshoba Regional High School Band under the leadership of Joe McCartney for their patriotic music and Taps Bugler's Jack Light and Harry Canton. Scout representatives uh, Sophia Scheider and um, Harper Jackson for their readings. David Schroeder for donating uh, the Jeep, but unfortunately we weren't able to have that today for our, our veterans to ride in. Jonathan Daisy, Jack Boyle, Stowe TV for filming the parade for those who cannot attend in person. Linda Hathaway, Gigi Langiza, Ann Needle, and others for all the communication support letting everyone know about the parade. G.H. Geldhill and the cemetery staff are preparing the three cemeteries for today. Louise Peacock and the members of the Stowe Garden Club for the ceremony wreaths and flowers along the monument. And finally to Mabel Halleck, who established a cemetery fund to purchase the flowers for the war memorials. Let's please give them all a big round of applause. Thank you for participating in this year's Memorial Day ceremony and for honoring those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country and our freedom. We will now safely reform as much as possible and march back up to center school where the Stowe police can control traffic and uh, allow us to leave. Order. Thank you. Order.